Welcome to TTP Turnbuckle Talk Podcast. You're listening to Keeman Cooper and John Dugan. This podcast is sponsored by Dirty Blondes. Dirty Blondes is a bar located in the heart of Blackpool, famous for their banging tunes, cocktails and 18-inch pizzas. The only place to get a pizza as big as your table across the Fowd Coast. If you're ever in Blackpool, check them out. They're on Facebook and on Instagram. That's Dirty Blondes. Blackpool. Let's talk wrestling. Hello. Welcome to TTP Turnbuckle Talk podcast. I'm joined by half man, half iron brew. It is John <laughs> Dugan. Hello. Hello. And <laughs> we're joined by a special guest. It is the wrestler from Essex, Aaron Warns. Hi guys, thanks for having me. How are you doing? How are we doing? Yeah, all well, good, thanks. Um, I'll be better when we can get back to shows and get back in the gym, but... At the moment, I'm just, yeah, I'm doing okay, thank you. When when was your last match? Uh, it was December the 18th, I believe, just for Christmas. It was a lad match um, okay. for the SOS, that's the School of Slam, um, which is where I train for the SOS title, um, which I won. I don't think you have a belt, so I'm guessing you won. Yeah, so um, my head coach, Paul Tyrrell, um, amazing coach, by the way, uh, he, he runs the SOS school. And he used to promote the UWA, which he's, he, he was bringing back before the lockdown. So we had one show uh, February of last year. Um, I, I wrestled Jody Fleisch on that in the main event, which was like, which was like a dream match for me. Um, and then we had like Johnny Storm and a few other guys and a lot of our local guys, uh, Dexter, um, Ben Jones, Harry Mann, a few of those guys on there, Corey McRae, who's incredible. Um, so yeah, so then... Paul wants a new UWA champion as well. So I, not only did I win the SOS belt, I was then awarded with the UWA belt that night as well. So I'm the first yeah, UWA champion for the for the new new brand. Okay. Oh, awesome. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um so that was in a ladder match. How you, how do you prepare for ladder matches? Is there a, an act to it or is it just see how it goes? Um, well, the, the thing with Ladder, because it's my, actually my third one. I, I won a Money in the Bank a couple of years ago, which is quite fun. Um, y- you don't realise how unsturdy the ladders are once you get them in the ring. So it's, it's trying to stay on the ladder a lot of the time. But you, uh, you clear the next two or three days in the hope that you're not going to be in too much pain, basically. And doing hey. our research, I mean, there's, there's some classic ladder matches out there, like as we've all seen, all the old TLC matches and things. But yeah, I know, like one of the, my favourite ones is, is Jericho Benoit one, which obviously a lot of people don't like to talk about anymore. Mm. But that was used; they used the ladder in such a different way. So yeah, it's, you, do, you do your research, um, and as I say, clear the next few days and hope your back's all right. <laughs> Did you is take it- any um, big bumps like the yeah. WrestleMania 17 TLC match? Um, I took a Spanish fly. We set up two ladders and I took a Spanish fly from a ladder um, right. about three quarters way up. And then he then frog splashed me off the top of the ladder. And he's quite a bit of Ryan Boyne, his name is. He's, he's, for, for a big guy, he can move. Mm. So hopefully the, the match will be online next week and, and, and I'll get people should see that because, yeah, the guy, the guy's very impressive. And, yeah, him landing on me from... Uh, from big old ladder that that was that was something <laughs> down there looking at him coming down at you you just hope for the best there for sure God. the spanish fly was beautiful yeah he's he, I say he's he's a big guy but he, can, he can fly and he can move hmm. um so just before i cut you off john um and hmm. where's that footage being uploaded to um so the there's an sos youtube page if you just search for school of slam wrestling um they'll all go through there it's all shared through the facebook page again sos wrestling um, I'll share it on all my socials as well. The link. Um, so my, all mine are is, is Aaron. Well, my Facebook is Aaron Warns PW, the pro wrestler, and then obviously my Aaron Warns Instagram as well. So all the, all the same. Yeah. Go on, John. Um, so, you, what's your favourite stipulation match to do? Is it the ladder match, or do you have any other ones that you quite like? Um, I, well, as I, two, I've one, two out of three I've been in. So you could say that's that's. A specialist match of mine, I guess. Um, but yeah, I've been in. There's a few sort of hardcore matches. I had a um, street fight match with Big Joe over at DNA in Ipswich. That was that was good fun. Uh, we made it onto Botchamania when the table didn't break. 
Oh, so, God. He's <laughs> on the same yeah. episode as Jericho's Bubbly. So, you know, it's not bad. That's not bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, when things like that happen, is it literally you've just got to think on your feet and you just go with it? Or is, is there like yeah, I, I mean, big discussions on it? For the, for the name, he's a big guy. So um, I've bounced off the table. I've sold round and he's just coming towards me with his flying knee. So I was like, okay. <laughs> here we go um, which yeah so you got you, you have to go with it don't you because you know you give up the game if you just stand there like oh what's next mm. yeah crack on didn't you do you um, when you do matches do you prepare them or do you kind of just have a feel for the crowd or and see how so the, the, when works? I first started I, I was literally you know like a like, like, let's do this 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 and this um and the more I've established a move set, if you will, um, it's it become easier for me to now be like, okay, well, I do this, I need you here. And then we'll, we'll work, you know, and I can just be like, this will be your heat here. Insert heat here. And I can just, you know, wing that for a bit. But yeah, still a lot. I, I like to know where I'm going. Um, but then there's, there's moments where, you know, you've got to listen to the crowd because that's what you're there for, isn't it? So yeah, you know, if, if they were, if they're, they're liking a strike off for example you'll keep it going because they're into it if they if they don't like it cut it short let's move on so you know it's, it's a mixture of the two um and there's been a there's, there was one show i worked with another sos guy nick payne um over at hew and we decided to call out on the fly out there um we did a, we had to do a submission match but as a draw <laughs> so mm. and because we worked well together a lot we could like call a lot of it out there which was really fun mm. Mm. I think with I try I wouldn't say I'm a super high flyer, but with some of the high flying things I do, you kind of need someone to know what's coming their way because if I go for something and they stand in the, in the way or they're too far back, it's going to look stupid and I'm going to hurt myself. <laughs> so, how long have you um, been wrestling for? Uh, so it's four years in January. I first trained. Okay. Um, and we have, we've got the luxury of, of um, SOS as an academy puts on shows itself. So um, I started off with a rumble, as, as a lot of us do. But I started pretty quickly. Um, I was put on a rumble within sort of three months of training, I think. Oh, wow. um, and then, yeah, so, so we had the luxury of, of, of um, training at a, a local caravan camp. So we was putting on like camp shows. So, you know, it's not the hardcore wrestling fans. If I did mess up or something didn't look right. I'm not going to get slaughtered for it. So I managed to get on that level of show quite early, to be honest. And then professional, first professional show was September of that same year. So sort of an eight, nine month turnaround. Okay. So I'm kind of working my way backwards, but how did you get into wrestling? Um, is it just something you want to get into? Was your family wrestlers? Oh, no. So um, I've got an older brother um, and he's one of his best friends. So my older brother, his name's Alex. He, he, he said he's going to listen to this later. Um, he's got a friend, Steve, who was also going to listen to this later. Um, mm -hmm. Hi, Alex and Steve. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they've always got like, big wrestling fans. Um, Steve's like, he still, he still now will watch like the 90, like 90s and 91, 92 sort of matches. And everyone was a massive Attitude Era fan, I think. So them two mm. really like, you know, my brother used to borrow VHSs from, from Steve and, and things like that. So I, I watched that. And then with the, the sibling rivalry, he was always Brett, I was Sean, then he was The Rock, I was Austin, and the living room has seen some five-star matches, as you can imagine. Um, so then, yeah, and then, and then the um, Wrestling League, which is no longer running, started running a few shows in Harwich. So I went along to a few of those. Then they opened the academy, uh, and then about a year after that had opened, I was like, this is doing really well, I'll give it a go. And then that's it. That's it, really. Mm. I think like all of us that get into wrestling, that we are fans that just kind of don't grow up. And we don't <laughs> really grow up. How, how old are you? you you've... I'm 31. 31 and I yeah, so... 27, so I wish I'd have started when I was like 16, <laughs> but I'd probably be broken by now. But <laughs> Yeah, because me know. and John are both in our 30s, and people mm. in our 30s, we, we lived in that 90s yeah. attitude there, which is just... On parallel, it was it was huge. Like everyone, you could walk into school and everyone knew who like Steve Austin, The Rock, and the Take and Kane. Everyone was, um, yeah. So like, and then I just didn't stop watching. So I like, got to <laughs> like when I was like 15, yeah. 16 and everyone stopped watching. And I'm like, 
Yeah, I mean, you need time to talk about the paper you watched last night. I stayed up till four. I'm in school Monday morning. Like, <laughs> early awake. But yeah, I was that guy. Uh, who was your favourite then, uh, growing up? My first ever favourite was Shawn Michaels, and he's continued mm. to be throughout throughout my like as as a fan, and then as a, as a as a wrestler watching his stuff is just amazing um but then obviously being a smaller guy i was always the smaller guys that got me i mean i was a, i used to be a huge x puck fan back in the day mm. so. um he, he was my guy for a long time uh, the whole dx thing was brilliant for me um with the outlaws as well triple h in china and then yeah it's you go back and you sort of like when you're putting your move set together, you sort of like cherry pick bits you like from like various people. Like Jericho mm. is one of my guys, and like Angle and those sorts of. When the smaller guys came in, that sort of thing was was great for me. Now, I think that every wrestler needs is a move set. They got the you know attire as well, but everyone needs a good catchphrase. Which brings me on to my next uh, <laughs> subject. <laughs> What's your catchphrase? It's you've been warned. <laughs> um, on the warns um because it's, it's it's my legit name mm. um i mean in harridge is a small town so when i did my first show um i like a lot of people were intrigued and wanted to come down and just just i think you won't see me in some tights to be honest but <laughs> <laughs> um so i use my I use my shoot name for it and then it just became that became the thing i was like when new day were, were the, doing the new day rocks thing and then it was like You've been warned. I was like, this is so <laughs> okay. But it just became a thing, and then like, like my finish is the final warning, and just it's, it works. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I'll go with yeah. that. You've even got uh, it on your merch as well. Yeah, so I had a new, a brand new T-shirt. Um, it dropped last week. The design, and it's gone live on on the gear tonight. Mm -hmm. Well, just before I came on, actually, uh, Rhonda and Josh doing a great job over there. So if anyone hasn't been on over there yet go check it out like it's got all the uk guys on there and they're absolutely great service um but yeah the link's up on my socials um which i'll post along with share when i share this out as well so um yeah so that's yeah my brand new t-shirt's out right now how did um your parents did, did they think you was just a, you know a dream that you was going to get over or did they actually think you was going to get into the wrestling business so um when i was younger uh, my mum was always very involved in anything i did so with football and things like that uh so i, I was i had a quite a big operation like 12 years ago now and i'd never really managed to get back into football at the level i wanted to um afterwards so there's always a gap of something i need, like a hobby of something i need to do so as soon mm. as i said about rest my mum was like yes that's perfect for you mm -hmm. um and i think out of let's just say 50 shows I've done in Harwich, she's been to 48, 49 of them. <laughs> she'll yeah. change shifts and she'll yeah. cover like, and just like weeks in advance, but like, yep, I'm there, get my ticket, get my t-shirt on, on front row. <laughs> so yeah, she's become, I mean, she's become part of the furniture at the show. So she was using an angle at one point and <laughs> great. <laughs> nice. That's cool. Um, so are you just mainly based around where you live or do you ever, like go to different places as well yes so harridge is kind of like the end of the earth um it's like the right in the corner of essex north essex um mm. so yeah for, for me to go to i mean i'd love to obviously to be, to be out there i've worked for um as i said dna doa which are both in suffolk uh hew which is also in essex um uh, there's a couple of other, a few, two, three others as well, sort of around the Essex Suffolk area, Norfolk area. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's hard because, um, which I know I need to do more of, and I will be doing more of as soon as we're allowed to, is that going to shows, offering to set up the chairs and things like that. Mm. When we're like an hour and a half, two hours from London in the car, it's a long way to go to set up a chair and in the hope to get on show three, four shows down the line. Yeah. But I know it needs to be done. Um, it's just, yeah, like, at the time, before there's always been, like, you know, lack of funds or, like, the car needs repair and I wouldn't trust it to get up the road that far. And But now I've got everything in place. There's absolutely nothing stopping me except from coronavirus. <laughs> so, does, um, sorry, does, um, 
Essex have its own sort of style of wrestling, would you say? Um, not that I'm aware. Of. I mean, there's, there's quite a few of the um, the world of sport guys mm. uh, um, are based around this way. I mean, and Paul Till himself is very much an advocate of the of the British rules. So we even have a British rules championship mm. at SOS. So yeah, I've seen that over, over the, the three um, three round of five rounds, uh, etc. And the the new belt is absolutely beautiful as well. That's what it's really good. Yeah, yeah I've seen the belt. Um... What's it like having a belt? Do you not find you want to wear it everywhere? Um, I mean, this <laughs> one's really heavy. Like, it's, it's so heavy. like it, it comes in this like huge case. It looks like I'm carrying like a saxophone or something. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, I mean, when I, I took it home, like, and, and and undid the case, and I was just looked at it. Um, and I don't care what anyone says. I know it's like a prop or whatever you want to call it, but to get given a belt and like uh, you just you still you still mark out for yourself a little bit don't you you're like yeah, yeah <laughs> this is my belt the question is do you get any anything free do you, do you ever go like oh my look mcdonald's i've got a belt and they go <laughs> there we go give, give um, them a free big mark i haven't yet but i've 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 been like people have, have said like oh you you do wrestling don't you oh, can i buy you a drink i'm like yeah absolutely you can um, because it's, as I said, there's not many people. You don't kn know many people that do this unless you're in mm. it, sort of thing. So, like, yeah, I get so many questions all the time. But like, you don't want to talk about it too much. So I, I always my answer to everything is when they always say, "Is it real? Does it hurt?" I will say, "Come to a show, watch it, and then you can ask me any question you want afterwards." Mm. What you should do is do what Vader did. And when they say it's fake, grab the person's right. tie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a bit bigger than me, though, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I um I did some research on on Harwich because I wasn't I wasn't too sure. We, we're both from Blackpool. You, you pronounced it right, so that's a start. A lot of people oh, don't. Good. So well done. <laughs> so I figured um, there's a few things I found out. Um, so they have like a pier, and they have um, a lot of ferries. Yes. But one thing that struck me is you can go seal watching. Yeah, you can. Did you know um, this, John? I don't know. So there's like loads of seals. Five, five things you can do in this, this lovely town. <laughs> is, uh, go yeah. see some seals if, if it takes your fancy. So I looked into it and there's these pictures when there's just there's just loads of seals. Just, yeah. yeah. There you go. So sleep little town full of seals. <laughs> We're good for tourism now, this, this podcast. We're, we're doing <laughs> <laughs> Um, how are you doing with training during lockdown? Has that been quite tough or are you doing all right? Yeah, well, um, before uh, I, as I said to you, like with, with the going to shows and things like that, I really started taking my nutrition and my workout seriously. So I had a trainer, um, Lewis Stanley, Lewis Stanley Fitness on Instagram, who did me a 12 week plan with my diet and my, my exercise. And then I was on week 10 i think when the gym shut again so i was so close to the end so i really got myself and then it was christmas so i was like oh, i love christmas <laughs> but he he then rejigged me a workout with the equipment i have at home so i'm still sticking to the diet religiously calorie counting weighing everything out hitting macros and then i'm doing a like a home workout for like five days a week i've got an exercise bike which is just over there where i can you know sit and watch you know, I'll be watching the Elimination Chamber Monday evening whilst on the bike because I knock out an hour or so on there. So, yeah, I mean, it's not the same, but it's what we, it's, you know, it's better than Yeah. Yeah. Do you find that, uh, because you said, you know, you are not many people wrestle in your town, do you get a lot of people kind of thinking, like young kids thinking, oh, maybe if he's doing it, I could probably do it. Oh, you know, honestly, yeah. Um, I got, as 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 a as a face down in down in Harwich, um, when I work the shows, I do get a lot of the younger kids like really sort of. I think you know they they really follow me, like support me like really well. Um, I think it's like the whole what Vince said about Ray Mysterio. I'm not comparing myself to Ray, by the way, <laughs> but like the kids see that figure and they're like, "That's cool that I can do that kind of thing." Yeah. So yeah, um, I think, well, hopefully it, it helps. I mean, they seem to enjoy my matches, so that's always good. Is there a, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> is there um, a lot of kids at the wrestling school? 
Uh, we did have a juniors class actually, um, which because we had to split it out because there was quite a few coming and we wanted to bring them up and rather than being in the ring with some six or two like eighteen stone guy, it's not really fair. So, <laughs> um, but a couple of a couple of the guys, um, Charlie May especially was he's like the standout junior, um, and he was really making a name for himself. Um, but yeah, there was there was a good sort of ten. In the class of under 16s for a while um but yeah it's, it's, it's good we obviously went when we went back to where we was allowed to do like small sorts of training like we had to write that one off but hopefully mm. when we're back to normal we'll get the numbers back in yeah it's good to see because i mean you know being like all the similar age when we were growing up there was there was no way to get into wrestling there was you get the you know the wrestling magazines and you'll be like yeah. american magazine i'd be like you know go to some state to you know, wrestle <laughs> no way mm-hmm. there's a wrestling school mm-hmm. and I now i hear about one of the guys he went to hammerlock and i was like how do i not know about that years ago i loved wrestling so much and i didn't really know much about the independent scene as far as i was aware wrestling was in america mm-hmm. yeah that's all i knew mm. and i suppose it's because of internet as well but yeah like wrestling has just has come so much more trendy if you will now yeah it's, yes i say you can just go online and look up wrestling schools and they'll be like oh actually there's one an hour down the road mm. which you know but when back in the back in the day you used to have to re- if you wanted it you have to like two three hour drives like both ways and that sort of thing well i live literally five minutes from where we, we train yeah so for me that's mm. amazing but um yeah and we still get guys come down like a lot because Colchester is probably the biggest town outside of Harwich. A lot of our guys live there, and some even further on sort of Chelmsford Way, mm. um, which probably hasn't been an awful lot to you guys. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I learned all these places because of football and like you know because of the lower <laughs> leagues. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I think it's because like wrestling used to be really secretive, didn't it? And yeah, especially like our age, it was always perceived as that like, it was like. 100% genuine what you were seeing. Yeah. Um, when did you kind of find out uh, it wasn't, and do you remember it? Well. There was, um, I don't know if you guys remember this, there was this like Secrets of Wrestling show. On TV. Oh, yeah. It's like the, mass, the, mass, the Mass Magician. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was a magician one, was, and then yes. they did a wrestling one, Secrets yeah, of Wrestling yeah. one. I remember and I watched that, that and I was, it was like, you could hear the glass break in my ear, like, oh, what is this? <laughs> uh, and then you go back and you're like, well, actually, he's just punched him in the face ten times and he's still standing, he's not bleeding, he's not bruised, so. Um, anyway. Did it ever yeah, I remember, I remember that program. So I think that was the first one. Um, and then, uh, But then after that, I was just like, I'm still going to watch it. <laughs> I remember being at uh, being at football and there was, I think it was a, like a TLC or something that was on Sunday. Uh, and there was a big UFC, like I think it was a McGregor fight and then a big box match all in one weekend. And everyone said, which one am I going to watch? So I said, well, I'm going to watch the wrestling because I know I'm guaranteed three hours of a great show. Mm. I think that, I think the McGregor fight went like 60 seconds and they paid like 15 quid for that. I'm like, <laughs> and it's about five o'clock in the morning. I, was like, I got paid yeah. for money. I saw yeah. someone get put for a table. This is great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and it's, um, I was going to say, it's funny, like, when you used to watch wrestling, you used to have to stay up, record it yeah. on the VHS. Like, yep. uh, we had, um, uh, we had R.P. Davis, who was, a, who was a professional boxer turned wrestler. And he was saying that, like, you had to invest into wrestling when you were younger. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think that's I mean, carried we, we on like, with us. These like faux leather video library cases on this old bookshelf. <laughs> and it was like <laughs> written, scribbled on the side, like No Way Out, 98. And just things like that. I mean, my brother used to, yeah, record them all. Good time. Yeah, I, I always used to record it. And then if I had any of my mates that said it wasn't real, I would show them like clips of... Like mankind being thrown off a cage and be like, how is that not real? <laughs> and yeah, how's how it like, like that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, what is your uh, what was your favourite pay per view to watch when you were growing up? 
do you think? Um, I'm, I'm a huge Rumble fan. I just love the Royal Rumble. Even even I, stay, I stayed up for this year's, like, again, mm, the Monday the Love a Rumble, and then obviously WrestleMania. Um, but I think one of my favourite ever is this a Survivor Series, I think it's 2002, the first elimination chamber where Michaels wins the belt. And you've yeah. got uh, Brock in the show on the undercard where mm. Heyman turns on Brock. That's a really good pay per view for anyone. Yeah. Because I think that's the um, where it's the SmackDown 6 and this uh, Ray and Edge against Benoit and Angle against the Los Guerreros in a three way tag match as well. Mm. And it's at Madison Square Garden, which always looks cool. Mm. So that's a really good show. And I think WrestleMania 17 is everyone's go to, though, isn't it? Yeah, it is a, it is a yeah. great event. Yeah. What, what do you think of like the products now? It took me a while to get into without the crowds, for sure. But then uh, mm. they were playing around with a few things, weren't they? The Thunderdome helps, for sure. Mm. Um, but because there's so much, I just limited, I limit to the pay-per-views. Because they usually catch up, get you up with anything you've missed, like storyline-wise. Mm. Or if I read online like Smackdown, Cesaro wrestled Brian, I'm going to be like, well, I'm going to, I'm going to search that one out and watch that one. Um, that I was watching some of NXT on my lunch break earlier, so I was just going through Balor and done. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll watch all the pay-per-views and things like that. Um, I'll even like watch Wrestle Kingdom and like most of the AEW pay-per-views as well, but the weekly stuff is so, it's just so much of it. This is a lot in there. The yeah, thing is, um, like, the actual show, like Ron Smackdown goes on for like, Three hours. Mm. Yeah. It's... And I don't know. I mean, I work full time, then I want to work out, then I want to eat, then I want to shower. Yeah. Like, okay, it's 10 o'clock. <laughs> I, <watch, laughs> I watch three hours of Raw when I'm asleep, but I like <laughs> an hour in. Have you got any favourites of the current product, then? Um, I mean, I, 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 I'm a big fan of Drew's, actually. Like, I think he's unfortunate to have held the belt without fans, but he's done really well, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, but again, it's, it's, it's like the, the smaller guys for me that I'm gonna look at more because I mean, as like, Reigns is killing it at the moment, it's yeah, it's really working on it. Mm. But I'm not, I'm not gonna start power bombing and like spearing people because that's just not me, <laughs> like, but yeah, he is he, they're, 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 them two as champions are doing great. I mean, obviously, I loved Edge coming back, um. And all that good stuff. But, I mean, AJ, again, he's another one that I've watched for years and I'll continue to watch because he's just amazing. Um, have you ever... Do you ever do tag team matches? Um, yeah, I was... Uh, when I was first sort of um, doing the pro shows, there was quite a few tag matches. Um, but the, my tag partner had... Uh, yeah, I think he had to have knee surgery in the end, so... Mm. Uh, and no disrespect to him or to anyone, but I don't like to rely on someone else. So, like, I mean, that could happen to anyone. I mean, it could happen to me. Mm. And I wouldn't want my partner to not get booked because I've been injured and vice versa. Is um, it is it like a harder match to sort of get the dynamic of? Because there's if anything, so many if anything, people. It's, it's easier because you mm. get, like, um, the baby faces have a shine up at the start, heels work, Many like false tag or whatever, then you have the hot tag and the go home. So it's actually, it's pretty easy, yeah. to be honest. Mm. Um, sorry to break kayfabe, guys. Yeah, so that, I mean, but I feel like I can have more fun with, with singles matches because 90% of the time I am the smaller guy as well. So I can always play on that. Mm. Um, no, I wrestled with Cody Hall and he's like seven foot tall. Legit, like and, and how tall are you? Uh, five six. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, on my Instagram, there's a photo of me looking up to him, and I'm like, okay, this is about to happen. But we can tell a story that he's just launched me around, and um, little comeback, underdog's not quite dead, and then, uh, and he legit knocked me out of that match as well. <laughs> in, yeah, um, fun. in SOS, um, do you have um? Males and females against each other. We have had, I think it's only sort of like there was a mixed tag I remember being a part of, and there was a 
was one match that was a um they were they were a pair, they were a partnership and then she was she was more like his valet but she was doing single stuff and then she turned on him and they worked a match okay. um but it's not it's not massively a thing that we do i mean there was okay. one wrestler we had harley ray who's no longer wrestles but she she would work quite a bit with the guys mm. um, but then we bit, built up a bit of a women's division and so like that became its own its own thing in the end yeah and is it is it a good women division now for sos um not so much because i said like i say harley no longer wrestles um and then another one like stopped for university reasons i believe mm -hmm. so it's like kind of dwindled down okay. for various reasons but um Paul's Paul's very well connected with women's wrestling. He actually helped train Beth Phoenix, so okay. um, he he's got quite a few contacts. So we had Heidi train on a show with us uh, last December, um, and I believe Sky Smithson is going to like, be involved with with any any women we have involved as well. Uh, okay, also, yeah. um, Paul's very well connected with WAW as well. So like Zach and Ricky and everybody. So. I think, mm. um, yeah, you know, he could always like, see if Julia or the Bellatrix ladies want to want to have a match on the show if we if we have that. So we have that option. So that's yeah. good. And is there many um, promotions around Essex and around the area that you're, you're at? Um, so obviously we've got ourselves um, SOS slash UWA in Suffolk. So Ipswich is just over the over the river from us. You've got DNA and DOA. Um, DNA, so, I mean, DOA have been going for a while and put on some sh some really good shows. Mm. DNA have, have had some classics. Uh, I've been to like, nearly all their shows. I've worked a couple of their shows as well. Um, I mean, before he ruined his own career, they had David Starr there quite a while. Um, Paul Robinson had done a fair few of their shows and some, some really good guys over there. A lot of the SOS guys managed to get over there mm. as well, which is good. Um, there's a tag team who work for both called the lads, Ben Jones and Alex Echo, who are amazing. They're really worth checking out. Um, and then I believe Wrestle Force work a lot of Essex as well. Uh, that's Ollie Pieces company. Um, and there's a couple of smaller ones. Um, I mean HEW were, were much were, were huge sort of like in the in the early 2000s. They still run a few shows. And who else we got? Uh, and then Triumph Wrestling did a few shows in sort of around Grey's area. Um, I did a couple of shows for them as well. So that was, yeah, I mean, it's, it's quite a few. And mm -hmm. do you reckon that's um, a positive or is it lots of competition? I think it's like the unwritten rule, isn't it? So like everyone has their own territory, if you will. So like no one's going to go up to yeah. the orange without asking the Knights. Um, you know, that sort of thing. So... I mean, it's, it's only a good thing if if these shows are good, like well produced and set, sell them well. Then and there's more places to work for for people. Then it's great. Mm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> um, you said you like a baby face. Have you ever been healed? Or would you like to be healed? To uh, yeah, I mean, we we did actually a SOS and WAW exchange. So we did a show. Like well, we did one show up there and one show down here. So obviously going into there, we were we were all heels. Nice. Uh, that was great. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> that was really good fun. And mm -hmm. I, I did uh, Fall in Star is another promotion where um, myself and Alex Echo worked as a tag against their tag champion. So obviously we went in as the heels. Um, but because we're quite, we were, as I said, we're both smaller guys, we could be that sort of, we believed we were like these, these monsters, these huge guys mm -hmm. that, you know, flexing our muscles and trying to power slam people we, so it's, yeah it's a lot of fun there um but i'm, I'm yeah i'm always open to working more that side and, and sort of broadening my game there absolutely how have you came up with your sort of what your persona is going to be is it kind of you cranked up till 11 or is it are you... yeah i mean it's i wouldn't say i've got a character as such because i can't like i do maybe too heavily rely on the fact that, you know, I'm all, I'm nine, I say nine times out of 10, the smaller guy, so I can be that underdog. Mm. Um, but I, it's something that I feel, feel like 
at the moment is the weakest part of me as, as a wrestler is if my actual character like I can't say that I, you know I'm Aaron Warnes and I am a pilot <laughs> or like do you know what I mean? mm-hmm. or I'm um, Repo Man yeah, I'm not that's this I haven't got a character as such like that uh, so mm. it's, it's something I, I have been working on in this downtime to sort of come back with yeah it's a good time to do it and i think it's it's one of them and it, i suppose different people concentrate on uh what they would do so some would go straight and try and get that character first and then try and maybe hone their wrestling skills which would you say is better to do get your wrestling skills first and then try and work out who you're going to be it, it really depends what your strengths are i mean we've got a guy um jack biggs his name is who's a former actor so mm. for him, like the character stuff came easy. His promos are great and like he projects his voice very well. He speaks very well because that's where he's from. I'm from more a uh, sports and orientated background. So therefore, like the moves come easier to me than the character does. Therefore, mm. I put that to the front and I'll work on the character alongside that. But yeah, as I said, I think it just I think it's, it's person by person basis. Some people come into it thinking like, oh, I'm going to be this and then put the moves to that. Yeah. So, yeah. How did you pick, like, uh, have you got entrance music? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's quite generic, but I use Throne by Bring Me the Horizon. Mm-hmm. Um, and I actually remember he, I, was, I heard it on the radio before I'd ever wrestled. And I was like, if I ever wrestle, this will be my thing. <laughs> and like, sort of six months later, they're like, pick a theme. I was like, oh, what's that song called? <laughs> I was humming away and I was like, what are you all about? I was like, no, no, it's this song. And I was humming it like an idiot and it was like, that's what it is. And I'm like, ah, okay, yeah, I'll use that. Do, do you, you like, sorry, do you, do you like practice how you're going to walk into that as well? Or did, you, did, run, actually, yeah. did you run ideas <laughs> by people and be like, what do you think? No, I, I, I had my headphones in, <laughs> I had a hood up and I was just walking around I was like, oh, I'm going to do this when it gets to this bit and this when it gets to this bit. Mm. What, what it means know, is, he was like, Mom, <laughs> is this okay? Is this cool? <laughs> yeah. um, I, I remember going to, um, I went to crew at a progress show um, but for, with Sid Scala, who he was on the show and he was um, doing his new, the business character, which was awesome, by the way. Mm. And he had like this, I think it was one minute 30 entrance and he had exact points where to hit on each point because he, he like came out in a full suit and it was like second 12 undo top button <laughs> second 24 undo top button. like he was so meticulous god but he's he, like he is amazing like he know he, getting feedback from that guy he, all the subtle details so him seeing him do that i was like okay that's obviously the way to go with the music you have to be careful what you pick because of like rights or whether the band yeah um so like with with the youtube uploads and stuff like that sometimes with the, like it takes longer to upload you have to clear that um and make sure you're not making any money off mm. it as well for videos and that sort of thing um i have been speak i was speaking before with k5 music and i will i probably will again soon actually because i think the custom way is basically the best way to go because it's mine it belongs to me and like i can't yeah. if i turn up at another show as i said it's quite a generic song so if I turn up at another show and like, oh, we've already got another guy to use that. Right. Yeah, because yeah, uh, the reason I asked, there's a wrestler uh, called Grado for ICW, who is hilarious. Uh, yeah. And his yeah. music was um, Madonna, Like a Prayer. And he, well, got, yeah, yeah. He, got, he got told he wasn't allowed to, to use the music. So <laughs> then the audience just sings it as he comes out. <laughs> it's, just, it's just great. So, uh, yeah, I just wondered. Oh, I think it's... Um, have you had any um, reality TV show uh, people come down to wrestle or to watch you? I'm obviously referring to the only way is Essex. Yeah, I think they were originally going to use our school a couple, like, a couple okay. of years before they end up actually doing it. Because um, there was talks about it. But we did have um, Ipswich Centre forward James Norwood. So his Twitter videos were going wild. Every time he scored, he would like do a Triple H or a Steve Austin, like two like mm. bottles and <laughs> everything. And then uh, The Rock retweeted him when he did The Rock. Oh, nice. So that just blew up. So we did, we got James involved with a charity event 
we did it for breast cancer. Um, yeah, I think it was breast cancer. It was a cancer charity. Um, and Football Focus and Sky Sports all came down to that. Nice. So that was quite cool. Yeah. Um, and yeah. he, the thing was that that was on a Wednesday. And I think the night before he got taken off as a sub for doing his groin. So he couldn't do much when <laughs> he came down. But he hit, he hit a couple of rock bottoms. But he was like an excited child. He was like, oh, I wanted to come off the top rope. I wanted to do this. It was like, Ipswich will kill us if you go back more injured than you are already. So please <laughs> do this. You'll be fine. But that was, yeah, that was really good fun. That was. And have you had any encounters with any actual uh, wrestling stars? Um, um, yeah, I was at a WrestleGate show um, and it's quite a famous show because they ended up having the cancelled pack and Adam Page match because um, he was a surprise uh, Adam Page was a surprise like, he just turned up at the end and they, they'd done their match it was great so I met both of those guys after the show um, nice. and I was like pack is incredible um, I, I love actually, him he's actually quite a nice guy but I didn't <laughs> say that um, <laughs> I've, I've met Osprey a couple of times as well because um, he's an Essex guy as well at a couple of shows, and um, I trained a couple of times at Lucha School, uh, London School Lucha Libre, which he co-owns, I believe, with Greg Burridge mm. and Gary. Um, so yeah, I've met him a couple of times, but none of the American guys. Pack is is decent though. I, I, like the oh, music, man. he can like off the top rope. It's just it's like a video game. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's why you can't I can't really pigeon myself as a flyer because there's people like him that do the things he do. So if I could yeah. just be like out, out around my game, so because if if I ever made it onto a show with him, whatever I hit, he's just gonna blow out of the water anyway, isn't he? So <laughs> you gotta like broaden your arsenal. Yeah. Who would be your um perfect opposition, do you think? If you had to choose anyone, um, well, I did. I was asked this by Paul, and I did say Jody was one of my all-time favourites to wrestle, and he booked the match next the following month, which was great. <laughs> um, in the UK, I'd love to wrestle someone like I've always said, someone like Rampage because he's just so big, and I, I'd, I'd love the big, the, the big guy, small guy. Meant like it's an easy story for me for us all to tell. Um, so someone like Rampage would be brilliant um mm. obviously pack would be amazing um but yeah there's 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 quite a few up and coming guys like loads of the up and coming guys that i can't wait to get out there and, and wrestle with is there anyone that's after your belt now i mean i hope so there's <laughs> lots of things that is important enough to <laughs> but i mean um, is there someone you know who's yeah i think i singled you out and after it Not, not yet, because we don't know when we can we go back out. So, like, the, our December show is usually our biggest show of the year anyway, but that was kind of... We put an end to, like, all of the stories have ended now. Wow, so okay. there's no new number one contender and things like that, because we're not... Like, when we relaunch... from Because when we relaunched, um, when SOS rebranded, and we did it in January, we had a number one contenders match, a title match, and all these things on that show, which I'm sure we'll do again. Um, I think we're going to have another... WW SOS show. Um, so any of the, I'd love to rest any of those guys like Zach or, or Ricky Jr. Mm. or someone like that. It'd be great. You'll have to do like an open challenge. I'm scared of it'll come through though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll do I'll do I'll, I'll do that, yeah. I'll do an open challenge. I'll open I'll, I'll put it out there now. I'll wrestle anyone for my UWA title. And then John will come out in some spandex. <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm down the Iron Brew King. Yeah. <laughs> I've got the last bit 30 seconds. <laughs> um, what's, is there a, what's the hardest thing in wrestling that people may not realise? Um, I mean, just that everything actually does hurt. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's not a trampoline. It's not like, mm. you know what I mean? Like, just bumping, you get used to it. And you get used to running roads, but after my first session, my back was so sore and I had like rope marks all on me. 
Um, were, you, were you expecting that, or did you think, oh, did you think just because of how people think wrestling is, like, uh, it'll be all right, it's just like lifting and stuff like that? Or did you realize yeah, how hard was, hitting it's yeah. going to be? Oh, yeah, generally, I generally went in there thinking, oh, this, this would be quite fun. Like, it doesn't look like it's that bad. Mm. Obviously, I say you get a tolerance to it. Um, and then it's, it's also the, the performing aspect because you've got to remember, like, I'll take a move, I'll take a suplex or something like that, and I'll be like, oh, yeah, I've got to tell the audience where that hurt. And mm. then you got to be, once you make that second nature, that's, all, that's always great. Um, and, you know, I think the fact that, like, it, everything does actually hurt. <laughs> <laughs> it hurts a lot. I think that's what I'd and say. It's, uh, it's, it's all fake. Like, I think what I'd find hard is the selling of like a move because, like, guys usually you have to like act as if stuff doesn't really hurt you. So for you to be like, yeah. oh, that's really sore, and, like, it must be quite <laughs> hard to do. Yeah, I mean, that's when I on my first training session, they was if I was instructed to sell as you're in a match because if you can't do it here, you're not going to be able to translate out there. Um, the London School of Lucha Libre, Greg Burridge, the head trainer there, what he'll do for his warm-up is he'll put on some dance music. You'll have like aerobic dance around, like getting your stretches and stuff in. But you'll also dance around like an absolute loon as well because <laughs> you really like, you, you know, it puts down your inhibitions and you, if you can act like an idiot in front of your, your pals, you'll have no problems doing it on the show. Mm. I'm sure Things key. It's really, really important. Yeah. If you, so, as I said, we, you, you you embed it in a second nature. So, taking a, a, a body slam, for example, isn't just going up and going down. It's going up, going down, sell. Mm. That's how you take it, sort of thing. So, it's always in there. And what would be? I mean, what's your goal now? <laughs> and then, what's the ultimate goal? Um, well, my goal now, as I said, I'm in a better position, sort of like life-wise. Um, so, unfortunately, obviously the virus is about, but it, for me, it's hitting shows. Just yeah. like I've missed it so much that I'm not going to miss a show now. Um, yeah. Just getting in my car, filling the car with, with, with the SOS guys, and just hitting shows. Um, mm. I've been announced um, in Rumble promotions. I've got a tournament in honor of Mal Mason, so I've got that to come up, um, which would be great. Um, I'm, just, I'm, I'm constantly in inboxes of promoters and things like that. I, I said, and as I said, even if it's just to let me know when your shows are, I'll come along and help out. So yeah, so that's 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 yeah. the immediate goal. Um, and then you know, once you get there, you get your name up there, then then I'll then I'll think of the next goal. Mm. But, um, yeah, I mean, there's there's a there's a production now with NXT UK. I'm not saying that's my goal, but there is a attainable goal now for UK guys that they can make a yeah. living yeah. without having to do the hard miles and like the eight hour trips on a Wednesday night and that Absolutely. sort of thing. So yeah. it's good. Would Would you ever ever want to wrestle anywhere abroad? And where, I would love to. Yeah, that's absolutely, that's absolutely goal. I mean, I have I have been speaking to um, exclusive. I've been speaking to a company in mm -hmm. Italy in the last couple of days. So wow. we'll see where that comes. But I was due to go up to WrestleMania last year. Mm. Um, and there was a few people I'd been, like the, the group of us going, we workers, and we'd spoken to a few guys about shows and um, was, was, was told we could have a couple of rumble spots and things like that. So, I mean, that would count. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you just, we just got to wait for everything to open back up again. Uh, and, then, and then we'll go from there. Um, do you have any, any final questions, John? Um, just quickly talk about your ring gear. How easy is that to pick out? Um, well, one of my um, fellow wrestlers, Zander, did the original design for me. Because uh, my first pair were like an off-the-rack generic they look like an old pair of edge tights from like circa 99. Mm. But I always wanted white as my first pair. Um, one, because of the Shawn Michaels childhood dream. Mm. He was wearing white tights mm. for that. And also because if you go to a show and then they'll, you, and you say to someone, did you see that match with the guy in the black? You'll say, which match? Did you see the, yeah. guy, see the guy in the white? 
yeah, I remember exactly which one. Yeah. So that's why that's one of the first reason I wore white, and also with like what my name and the catchphrase and stuff. So it's like a warning sign with my AW logo in the middle. So that's how it all incorporated in. So that's why I go with the yellow. So the white and the yellow stand out. Um, then we tried a few other colours. So I've got the blue and, white, blue and yellow as well, which, um, yeah, I love those. And then this last show, I debuted my new silver pair. So they're like all metallic silver. And, oh, they're beautiful. <laughs> and uh, mm-hmm. because I, don't, I didn't want to go black. I wanted to go something dark or sort of like darkish compared to the white. So yeah. Went with them and they came out so well. Are they quite expensive? Yeah. Was, um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When, when when I bought the blue pair, the second pair, I think I was quite busy that for a good sort of three, four month period and they paid for themselves after mm. after a little while. So but God, there was one weekend I worked Friday, Saturday and double duty Sunday. And it was necessary to have two pairs of gear then because they would have stunk otherwise. God. But, uh, I mean, yes, yeah, so it's, it's an investment into yourself, isn't it? So yeah. that's why I go to the gym. That's why I find eat well. That's why I watch as much wrestling as I can and why you get the best gear and stuff like that because you don't want to turn up and just look like some guy's walked off the street. I think, I think, is it quite easy to kind of track down a company that's good at making wrestling gear? It is now. Yeah, there's, a, there's some really good ones in the UK. Um but I get mine from E Lucha um, because they were the one, the one that when I bought my, I said my generic off the off the rack pair. I bought from them. I was very happy with them, mm. how they fit and like they like machine wash on everything. So um, and they do a custom area as well. So I went through them, and I've been satisfied with them every time. So it, each time they've got, I've gone through them. Um, but yeah, there are like a load of UK people um fix stitches one who a lot of my friends go through um yeah it's, i mean imagine though in the mid to late 90s just trying to find some wrestling gear yeah, must have been didn't like, have, like so many online yeah yeah we have to make some out of curtains or something yeah. <laughs> yeah there's a lot of like clever gear back in those days weren't there like, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you can't uh, like, like, everyone took the ACW route and went in shorts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, you could be like a um, naked medium. <laughs> All of that, yeah. <laughs> That's one way. <laughs> we'll wash your gear afterwards, I guess. Yeah. Um, you said you're going to watch the Elimination Chamber. Have you got any predictions for it? Who do you think is going to win? Who do you want to win? Um, I think Drew Drew will keep the belt in the men's raw. Um, is that right? Yeah. The same night, got, yeah. yeah. I think it's Cesaro, Daniel Bryan, uh, Gio Zou. I think it will be either Cesaro or Bryan. Because <laughs> then they will get their title shot, like is it which which they both deserve, I think. But I think it's Edge and um, Reigns at Mania. Mm. Mm. When do you think the um, the winning the bank is going to be cashed in? Because it's it's going to be cashed in soon, soon, hasn't it? Yeah, um, it's a miss, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. He took him, yeah, he took himself out of the chamber, didn't he? Um, I think he'll try maybe this show actually and lose. Um, yeah, I think he'll try at Elimination Chamber. Because that's how that's how Edge did it. It wasn't the first time. Oh, that, really uh, on Cena, is that right? I think you're right. Uh, yeah. Think you yeah. What's been your favourite cash in? I think um, maybe the Edge one because I I remember staying up to watch that one live, and that was no one had thought of that. Everyone thought it'd just be a straight up match, and he just comes out at the end mm. of this elimination chamber. To see his seen his face. Um, the Dolph Ziggler one as well was huge. Um, yeah. That like the crowd Seth reaction. Rollins, like, for me. But the Seth Rollins yeah. one, yeah, sort of the Seth Rollins one, yeah. 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 He, well, I quite liked we, Yeah. I think a couple of people called it after he lost to Randy. Mm. 
but no one actually believed it until we actually come running down and everyone just thought, I, was, I, was, I watched WrestleMania with the same few mates every year and we were all just like oh my god this is amazing <laughs> well I believe he only got told about it like not long before he cashed it I think, in I think it was after his yeah. match he got told I know yeah <laughs> I think Seamus's was a good one as well, where Roman was celebrating and there was confetti and he just appeared out of nowhere. Do you remember that? Yeah. yeah I, th I think my, my least favourite was the Randy Orton and Daniel Bryan because everyone saw that one coming. Mm. At SummerSlam. He beat Cena, then Triple H was the guest referee. And he's just casually standing around waiting for brides to turn around, just like, oh. What's <laughs> <laughs> all that coming? I think the most underrated, mm -hmm. though, is RVD. That one night stand yeah. match with Cena was amazing. Like, the crowd were ridiculous. RVD is just, I love him. He's so good, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. I, just, yeah, I just wish he'd. That's another I don't one. I'll never be back. Can't take it. anything from. Yeah. No. I don't think I don't think so. Um, so, Aaron, just before we go, um, once lockdown is is out of the way, we're back to normal. Um, what do you think the rest of the year has for SOS and for yourself? Um, I think we'll, we'll as soon as we're allowed to, and as soon as we're all sort of back into ring shape and safe, we'll, we'll go back to our last Friday of every month, our Friday night SOS shows. Um, hopefully we can get them out back out again. I think because we have a luxury of of the venue we train at is is like mm. owned by uh, one of the guys who owns who the guy who owns it is invested into SOS as well. So we don't sort of you know a lot of people aren't running at fifty percent capacity because they can't afford to basically. But we have that luxury we can. So we well, hopefully yeah. we'll be able to get back out there. Um, but as I said, as soon as things start opening up. I'm I'm gonna be like first one at the door, like just just trying to I said trying to get, get myself back out there. Mm. Good, yeah. And um, we'll put all your details um, on our social media. Get trying to sell your your merch. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it's, yeah, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Um, and yeah, I look Great. forward Thank to you. thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing you and you. SOS um, in the future. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, all right, I'll talk to you soon. Let's get back out there. Yeah, you too, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.